Hello youth, another youth video on a Sunday morning. Um, how you going? You doing all right? That's good. Today we're continuing our series. I just hit the table. Today we are continuing our series um, looking at gospel identity. Specifically today we're looking at uh, love and how God loves us and how no matter how much uh, our parents love us or our friends love us, um, God's love is so much greater and bigger than that and how much we how much we need love as human beings. Uh, I wonder, question for you, would you give up your life for someone else that you loved? Something to think about um, as we look at today's video from the Praxis team. Uh, I'll pop back up real soon. 498, 499. 500! Back in college, I was invited to a party. But I wasn't actually invited to the party, but a friend of mine was invited to the party, and he asked me to come to the party with him. What he was told was it was a party to celebrate a friend of his wife who had just become a Canadian citizen. It was a sort of welcome to Canada citizenship sort of party. And so I said, sure, I like Canada. I'll come to this party. But it was the moment when we walked into the party that I realized things were not as they seemed. Up on the walls were pictures of all of these friends and these people. And when the couple came and greeted us and welcomed to the party, I could tell they were a little confused why I was there. And that's when I realized the truth. See, what these friends had actually done was throw a reverse surprise party. They wanted to surprise all of their friends and invite them to a party that was for them and about them. It was, a, it was a chance for them to encourage and show their support and shower their love on all of these friends. Now remember, I wasn't invited to this party, but now I'm stuck at this party. And the worst part of it was, at the end of the night, they actually pulled everyone together and individually went through one by one how much they loved and how much they appreciated each individual and told stories of how they were connected and all that sort of stuff. And then they got to me, and I'll never forget, they looked at me and they just said, Brody, thanks for coming tonight. How awkward is that? I mean, being in a place where we're not loved really sucks, doesn't it? Studies have been done in the past in orphanages where some kids are held and hugged and kissed and loved on while others were not. The result, those who were shown love thrived and the ones who were not struggled. It's built into our DNA, so much so that when God created man, he looked at him and he said, this guy needs a companion, someone who can love him and whom he can love back. It's how we're wired. Nobody watching this would say of themselves that they don't want anyone to love them. And I'm not talking only about love between couples in a relationship. I'm talking about love generally. You need your parents or your guardians to love you. If you don't, you struggle and you don't thrive. You need your friends to love you, your small group to love you, your community to love you. We need love. We love love. Now, those of you who saw the last video know that this film series is about our gospel identity. The identity that is revealed to us through who Jesus is and what he's done. In the last video, we talked about our first identity marker, brokenness. It's a definer of who we are and how we are. It's not just the actions that we do, but we are broken. But it doesn't just end there. This week, we're going to unpack the second marker, the reality that we are loved, or more specifically, you are radically loved by God. Now, you might be watching right now and wondering, how can that be true? How? 
How could God allow me to go through so much hurt and yet love me? Or how could he love me with all of the things I've done to contribute to the brokenness in this world? If that's the case, I want you to try your best to keep an open mind during this conversation about God's love. And if at the end of it all you still feel like you can't believe it, then at least you gave it an honest shot. Because as I said at the beginning of our time together, we need love. We long for it, look for it, and are usually, from an earthly perspective, let down by it and through it. And you need to know that the love God invites you into, to lavish upon you and engage you through, is unlike any kind of love you've experienced before. The Apostle Paul wrote about how unbelievable God's love is in the Bible. In fact, he said it's so incredible that you need God's help to actually understand it. He says that, humanly speaking, God's love cannot be comprehended because it's so above and beyond human love. Listen to what he said of it. I pray from his glorious unlimited resources that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. You see, the conversation we're going to have needs to be about so much more than just facts and information. Just knowing that God loves you won't transform you. It's in experiencing that love and dreaming about it, imagining through it, that you discover how extraordinary it actually is. And so my hope is that you can see in four very real ways how it is that God loves you and that in seeing these, they would lead you to maybe a new understanding or appreciation towards this whole idea of God's love for you. The first is that you are loved most by the one who knows you best, God. Oh. So for example, back in my college days, I had tons of roommates and things always started off really well. We got along with one another, enjoyed each other's company, but the more we got to know one another, the more we just drove each other crazy. I lived with this one guy, Andrew. He was a mess and regardless of how filthy he left the place, how many dishes he left in the kitchen, he swore by the fact that he only ever used one bowl. Andrew, clean up your mess. In Psalm 139, David writes just how intimately God knows us, going so far as to say that he knows our every thought, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, and yet he loves us all beyond our comprehension. Secondly, God loves you for who you are, or namely, whose you are, not because of what you do. In Romans 5, Paul tells us that when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Jesus told a story to illustrate this radical love, and maybe you're familiar with it. It's the story of the prodigal son. The son leaves his father's house to pursue his selfish desires, but after squandering his entire inheritance, he ends up back at home, penniless and ashamed. And you'd think his father would be angry when the son comes back, but he's not. There's no scolding. No, I told you so. His father rejoices that his son has returned home and even throws a feast to celebrate. You see, to the father, it's not about what his sons have done. What matters is that they are his children and that he loves them. It's similar to the relationship I have with my kids. I don't love my kids because of what they do or don't do for me. I love them because they are my kids. I don't have to fall in love with them or learn to love them. The moment that they came into this world, I instantly, totally, and with all of my heart loved them. And God's love for us is even greater than that. God is love. 
It's part of his very nature, his identity. And we're created by God in the image of God for God. And if God's very nature is love, then I believe it's totally appropriate to think that we are created by love in the image of love for love. Third, according to Paul in Romans 8, there's nothing that can ever separate you from God's love. Paul describes neither death or life or angels or demons, fears for today or worries about tomorrow, and not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And finally, you can visibly and tangibly see God's love. Jesus died for you. There's no greater example of love than that. God's love is active. He left his place in heaven and in humility came to earth. He lived a life much like yours, experienced pain and hunger, sadness, temptation. He experienced it all. He is a God who understands you and your hurts. He's relatable. He's not distant, aloof, or unapproachable. He also didn't leave us in the pain and brokenness, but instead did something so radical, so unheard of, so beyond all understanding, that even those closest to him thought he had got it wrong. He humbled himself and died a criminal's death on a cross, though he had lived a sinless life. He bore punishment and shame and guilt that he never brought about upon himself. He bore it for you. He took all of the brokenness and sin and guilt and shame and wretchedness about you and placed it upon himself so that you could thrive despite your brokenness through godly righteousness. Now, you might be watching and you might be putting some of the pieces together going, okay, I can understand very easily my own brokenness and the brokenness of the world we live in. I can even start to see and get a glimpse of this whole idea that God loves me. But where does this love lead me? I mean, I'm loved and yet I'm still broken. I'm loved and yet I still choose to hurt others and continue to be hurt by others. What good is this knowledge of God's love if it doesn't lead me anywhere? And that is actually the perfect question and exactly where we're going to be going in our next session together. You see, the final part of our gospel identity is that we have the opportunity to be rescued. And you'll find out that I wholeheartedly believe the rescue that God has given us is not just a rescue from our brokenness, but it's a rescue to something, an invitation to something so much bigger, so much better than anything we could ever imagine that we can experience right now. You are loved. You are the beloved son or daughter of the God of the universe. And I say this to you because I truly believe it's one of the most important and foundational truths that you can ever hear or understand. If you're here tonight for the very first time and you chose never to come back again, I would want to make sure that you heard and understood that you are loved by God. Oh, that we could be a community who communicates this truth to those who we come into contact with daily. That God is love, true, absolute, unconditional, radical, universal, practical, tangible love. Isn't it great to know that we are loved by God? Um, I hope you went through the questions. If you didn't go through the questions, go back and do the questions. I didn't mention the questions at the start, so I'm mentioning them now at the end. Go back, look at the questions, think about the questions, respond to the questions. Lovely. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you sent your only son to die on a cross for us. Um, which is the greatest example of love that anyone has or could ever show. Lord, thank you that um, that death uh, has given us life. And thank you that you rose again to life to show us that that is possible. Lord, I pray that each of us uh, watching this video um, will be impacted by that. Lord, and that you will speak directly to us. Um, Help us to turn from our ways and, and follow you in all things. 
Lord, we pray for the coronavirus, that it will uh, go away. Lord, I pray, that, I, I thank you for our leaders and our medical professionals who have helped keep us uh, relatively safe. Lord, I pray that the people in Australia and around the world will continue to listen to that advice uh, and will be able to continue to flatten the curve and keep people out of hospitals. Thank you that through all of this, you are in control and that you are sovereign and almighty. Pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. It's almost halfway through the year. Crazy. Uh, please send me an email if you need anything at all. Uh, I'm youth at crossculture.net.au. See ya.